My name is Robert, uh, middle initial Y, Kodama, K-O-D-A-M-A. Mm -hmm. K-O-D-A-M-A. Mm -hmm. That's a Japanese origin, right? It's a Japanese, my, my, my folks, uh, you know, my parents came from Japan uh, to Hawaii to work uh, in uh, the sugar industry. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I was born there and grew there and joined the service there. I see. When were you born? Uh, January 21st, 1929. So you were born in the era of Great Depression? Uh, yeah, you might say that, but, you know... In it, Hawaii, there was yeah, not in much... In Hawaii, I, I didn't notice that because, you know, we were in a, a, a sugar plantation uh, housing uh, and uh, being as young as I was, you know, I didn't even notice any, anything. I see. You know. mm -hmm. uh, so tell me about the school you went through in Hawaii. Oh, um, uh, we, we spent, uh, uh, after going to uh, English school, we, we have to go to Japanese schools. Ah. And uh, uh, they had two Japanese schools. Uh, one was uh, Buddhist, and the other one was uh, Shinto. I see. And uh, my parents didn't like uh, us being raised uh, Shinto, so, you know, we were Buddhists. And so we uh, uh, went to the Buddhist uh, uh, side of the, you know, Japanese. There were two Japanese schools in, in Waipahu. And uh, uh, on the uh, Buddhist side, uh, it, it was... Uh, uh, mandatory that everybody takes uh, judo. Ah, I know judo. You know, you, 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 you do judo? Yeah. Oh, that's good. Anyway, the, the you know, the, uh, he, that, that's called the Higashi school and the and Nietzsche school. The Higashi school uh, was judo. So my parents decided, you know, we ought to go there. Although our origin, you know, was samurai family. Mm. Uh, I think it dates back uh, around 700 years. You know, I, I've, I've looked, you know, I've seen the, the, the grave, you know, private graveyard, mm -hmm. and it, it, it shows all the tombstone, you know, yeah. all the descendants. So, yeah, I, it's probably over 700 years. Wow. Yeah. And uh, my, the, the unfortunate thing is my, my dad didn't want to be buried there. You know, he said uh, his, his family is here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. so he decided he, he wants to be buried in Hawaii. I see. So he gave the property to his brother. Oh, in Japan. In Japan. I see. Yeah. Uh, when did you graduate high school then? That Japanese high school, right? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, the war started, uh, let's see, yeah, December 7, 1941. Yeah. So as soon as the, the war started, mm -hmm. the Japanese schools were closed, oh. completely closed. Uh, they arrested all the teachers and the, the Buddhist uh, priests. Even Buddhist priests? Yeah, they, they, they just shut down the whole process. Uh, uh, on the Nishi side as well, uh, all the teachers were arrested, um, even the, you know, uh, uh, the priests were arrested. Wow, that's too cruel. Well, I don't know if you've heard about uh, you know what what went on during the war, but there were camps I being know, set up. I know that. Yeah, yeah. There were about ten camps here. In Hawaii, I didn't think we had any camps, but later on we found out there was one. Oh, in Hawaii. Yeah, in in Hawaii there was one one camp. Mm-hmm. And when the war started. Uh, my dad was arrested for, not, I don't know why, but, uh, you know, my dad was arrested. He worked in the sugar industry. Yeah, he was a laborer, you know, and uh, because of the, f the, the relatives in Japan, he was arrested uh, and uh, spent six months in, in San Island, which is a POW camp. And uh, I guess they couldn't prove anything anything that, you know, he, he's attached to anything, so 
they, they finally had to let him go. So that was, you know, that was okay with us. Um, so you had to stop high school? Uh, no, the high school uh, uh, continued, you know, Waipo High School. So you went to Waipo? Uh, yeah, Waipo High School. Could you spell it? W-A-I-P-A-H-U. Uh-huh. So when did you graduate then? Uh, well, I, I didn't graduate high school. Uh, I, I, I quit uh, uh, during the uh, junior year. Uh-huh. And uh, I decided, you know, I, I don't have any, any um, uh, way to go to uh, universities, you know, no money. Uh -huh. So um, I might as well learn a trade. Mm. So I went to a um, uh, trade school for two years. I see. Yeah. Trade school. Yeah. What did you do there? I, I learned uh, machine shops. I see. So what did you think about it? I mean, just be honest, okay? As a Japanese-American, Jap Japan attacked Pearl Harbor in 1941, and Americans began to arrest Japanese. That has nothing to do with the war. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel about it? Were you angry or? Well, I was angry because they arrested my dad. Right. You know, because I, I didn't see any connection at all with my dad with the relatives in Japan. Just because they were in the military doesn't mean he, you know, he was subversive. Right. Uh, to me, my old man was, uh, you know, the nicest person I know. He never, he never struck me. He, you know, he, he, he never disciplined me at all. It was my mother that did all uh, that, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh. And so uh, uh, w when I decided to join the military, I saw tears in his eyes, you oh. know. Yeah. So your father saw you joining military? No, no. I joined and I told him, I said, I'm joining because I, I want to get, get uh, you know, the responsibility out of the way. During that time, uh, we had the draft. Draft. And so I didn't want to get drafted when I'm in my 20s. You know, when you get in just about getting married and, and right, right. You know, so, so you need to yeah. finish this. So I wanted to finish before that. So we talked it over with uh, you know my my buddies, and uh, we decided, yeah, maybe we ought to, you know, complete the obligation before you know we we, we really start going, uh, getting older. So we joined. When did you join? Uh, August, nineteen forty-eight. And where did you get the basic military training? And, and uh, the basic training was in Hawaii, oh. in Schofield. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've been I know, Schofield. I know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Schofield. And after graduating from Schofield, um, you know, we had a choice where to go. Uh, some of them went, went to, I guess, Europe. Uh, some just went to the mainland. But uh, a couple of us, uh, we decided we, we, no, not a couple. Of, there were about six of us decided to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. So it took us uh, uh, 22 days on the ship just to go to Japan. That's long. Uh, yeah, and the reason was, uh, you know, the, the, sh the ship had made stops, you know, in Guam and the Philippines. Oh, I see. And, and, and from the Philippines to Japan. But on the way to Japan, the ship was diverted to Shanghai, China. Why? And we were wondering what for. Well, uh, uh, our uh, leader said, um, Mao Zedong uh, is uh, uh, beating up uh, uh, Chiang Kai-shek. And so, uh, uh, Shanghai was uh, uh, unavailable, you know, to, to land. So the, the ship was diverted to uh, Tsingtao. I think now they call it Tsingtao, you know, kind of further on north. Uh, Tsingtao, yeah. Yeah, so we went to Tsingtao 
to pick up uh, dependents. I didn't even know they had Marines out there. Oh. You know? And so um, we, we saw all these dependents coming on board the ship. Mm -hmm. So that diversion, uh, I guess, uh, took about a week. I see. That's why. It Th takes that's why it, it took 22 days. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you went to Japan as occupation. Mm -hmm. What did you do? Where did you go? And what did you do? Well, in, in the occupation, um, uh, I was sent to the. Uh, Infantry at first, um, the 21st Infantry Regiment in mm -hmm. Kumamoto. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed there uh, about five months, and uh, then I was uh, transferred to um, uh, th uh, Third Engineers, uh, Charlie Company. Mm -hmm. um, and I stayed there um, all the way out to uh, around May of uh, uh, 1950, a Charlie Company. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, I received the promotion to go to um, uh, headquarters and uh, service company. Where is it? Uh, that's still in the same battalion, you know. Mm -hmm. We have four. Where you were staying there in the name of the city? Uh, that in was Kita Kitagata. Kitagata. Kitagata, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So the whole battalion was there. And so from, from C Company, I moved to uh, H&S Company. I see. You know. And uh, uh, I, I was put in charge of uh, what they call a mobile machine shop. Mm -hmm. You know, the... Uh, the truck had a machine shop behind it, you know. And uh, as soon as I, I transferred, they uh, sent me to uh, Yokosuka for yep. amphibious training. Uh -huh. I didn't even know why I was, you know, uh, being trained for amphibious. I didn't think we would, you know, have any kind of war. So anyway, uh, I went there. And uh, my brother was uh, stationed in Yokosuka, my older brother. Older brother? Yeah. Ah. So uh, uh, I called him and I said, you know, I'm in Yokosuka now. And he said, no problem. He said, he's going to come and pick me up. Well, he was supposed to come and pick me up, I guess it was Saturday, mm -hmm. something like that, Saturday or Sunday. And uh, I was put on CQ, you know, charge of quarters. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was Friday. So uh, I don't know if you understand what CQ is. Uh, you know, when you're in charge of the quarters, uh, you're responsible for yep. all what's going on in, in the company. You know, yep. you have to take care of everything uh, that happens. Uh, you have to make sure everybody's returned from anywhere uh, before uh, 12. Yep. And so, um, uh, you, you don't get much sleep. So I was really tired, you know, I was really tired as heck. And uh, so uh, my, when my duty was over in the morning, uh, the next day, I went over to the mess hall and uh, I started drinking black hot coffee to wake me up. And the radio was going on. And all of a sudden they interrupted the songs and said, uh, North Korea invading South Korea. And, I, you know, I kind of thought, oh, heck, that, that's, that's an ocean away. You know, I, I don't even know why, why they even announcing that thing, <laughs> you know, for us. Well, it happened that uh, uh, Truman probably had ordered ground troops to be in Korea. So as soon as uh, you know, the broadcast was, was on. Uh, one of the uh, uh, master sergeants uh, came running into uh, the mess hall and said, everybody, you know, get back to your unit. We're going to get out of Yokosuka and all go back to your units. 
Now, they were the 19th Infantry, uh, uh, and, and us, and, and I guess some other infantry was there. So, you know, there was a whole bunch of people there, and it took a while, probably around six hours, to pack up and get on the train and get shipped to, uh, uh, you know, your home base. And our home base was in Korea, uh, Kokura. <laughs> uh, and I decided, you know, I'm going to uh, go back to Kitagara, which is, you know, the outskirts of Kokura, uh, to, to get all my, you know, uh, things that I have. Well, they won't allow it. They just put us on the ship from there. From where? From Kokoska? Yeah, as soon as we got off the yeah. train, uh, they put us on, on the uh, uh, LSTs. So we never got back to, you know, Kitagata. But my buddies uh, in C Company uh, was, you know, thought ahead that, that uh, if that happened, they would bring the stuff over to me. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, so I was really happy about that, you know. Yeah, they brought all my foot lockers and everything. So otherwise, I was, you know, I didn't have any clothing. Hmm. So when we got on the ship, um, uh, they start, you know, start sailing, and uh, this guy that's supposed to be the ammunition guy, he comes around and started p passing out uh, one clip of ammo <laughs> for the M1 rifle. <laughs> and I, went and looked, I said, you mean there's only eight rounds? The guy said, oh, you don't need any more than that. <laughs> You know, uh, as soon as you get 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 to Pusan, it's it's uh, when they see us coming. Uh, the North Koreans will will take off and and you know lead South Korea. So okay, you know. So we landed in Pusan. When was on it? On July fourth, I think it was July fourth. Mm. Uh, then we we were put put into a, an area where. Um, I think it used to be a school, you know, school ground. And here I saw all these people, um, uh, South Korean uh, army guys, uh, digging foxholes, you know, in Pusan. And I said, so I, I decided I'm going to find out what's going on. And uh, I tapped a guy on the shoulder. And because I can speak Japanese, uh, and, and those people, could speak Japanese. Uh, I guess they had, what, 40 years of uh, occupation there from yeah. Japan? 35 of 45? 35. 35, mm -hmm. yeah. So most of the, the people our age could, you know, speak could read Japanese. and write. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, I never learned Korean at all when I was there. So I, I, I asked the guy, I said, what are you digging for? And he says, uh, you know, they're preparing for uh, the North Koreans. Uh, invasion I said oh I said uh, I don't think you have to worry about that you know <laughs> we're here now and you, you have know? enough <laughs> clip right yeah, we're here now. Them. <laughs> <laughs> I said this as soon as they see us they tell me uh, uh, they will turn turn around and, and go back no, uh, north uh, I guess he just looked at me like a, you know a dumb fool you know mm -hmm. and then he kept digging and he didn't stop so I, I, I just said, oh, okay. Then uh, a few days later, we were shipped out to um, uh, um, uh, Taejeon. Uh, and they, they camped us out on, on uh, uh, kind of like a plateau. And uh, there was a bridge way ahead. I guess that was the, was it the Kum River? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that bridge was supposed to be blown mm. as ordered. So we were there uh, on the plateau uh, as an h &S company. Now the, the line companies, you know, the, my former C company was further on down somewhere. I, I didn't know wh where they were. So uh, you still belong to 21st Infantry Division? No, no. Now by by then, I, I was out of 21st Infantry. So now you are. 24. Yeah, I'm. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, I've been in Third Combat Engineers since uh, um, 
Yeah, latter part of May or June of 1949. So I spent, you know, quite a, quite a few months uh, before the war started. Okay, so in Taejeon, what, what, what was the situation there? Uh, was, were you able to see North Korean enemies? Well, I, I didn't see any uh, North Korean army. Um, we were there on the plateau and we were waiting for uh, orders uh, to, you know, to withdraw because what we were doing, I guess, is you, know, you, you stay here, uh, you delay the North Koreans, and then move, move to another spot, delay and move and delay yeah. and move. Yeah. Because we couldn't fight them. Uh, they were only, uh, you know, the infantry uh, regiments were under, under strength. Uh, a normal uh, infantry regiment has about 3,000 personnel. Well, almost all, all the three regiments that we had were under strength. Yeah. In fact, I heard uh, the 34th uh, Infantry, yeah. they, were, they were down to uh, maybe about, uh, uh, maybe less than 2,000, you know. So all the, inf the regiments was under strength. So, you know, you can't hold the line very long. And we were just, just hoping that we could delay them long enough so that other units can come from Japan, like the, the 1st Cavalry and the 25th Division. Mm -hmm. You know, we were expecting those to come as soon as possible. So we were delaying and just, you know, going backwards, backwards, backwards. And during the time that we were going backwards, uh, in Taejeon, uh I guess uh, uh, they got around, around uh, instead of coming forward, I guess they came around and tried to block, you know, the block the Blank. getaway. Yeah. And so uh, we didn't know, know what was happening. And so uh, our commander uh, called uh, uh, CP, you know, which is the command uh, uh, to, to ask, what are we doing here for? And, uh, and they, they didn't even know we were there on the plateau. He says, what are you guys doing over there? <laughs> so we packed up and we started moving out. Uh, usually, you know, the H&S company moves out first, right? And the line companies follow. Well, we, we moved out and, and we, we just had some sniper fire coming, going through Taejeon. Um, and that's about it. You know, we, we got out nice and clean. Ah. Yeah, uh, I was really surprised that, you know, we got out. Uh, because uh, the C company, my former company, couldn't get out. Yeah, they got overrun and, uh, uh, you know, people I knew uh, uh, was either captured or, you know, they died there. So you were lucky that you came out of Charles Company and joined that, the that, other that's one. That's right. I was really lucky. You know, I, I guess uh, my luck continues to hold. Um, uh, there were a few other times when I was a, a kid uh, that I could have died. You know, I, I had dysentery during my uh, uh, younger years that uh, uh, it, it just didn't go away. And uh, the doctors were thinking that, you know, they may not save me. So I was in the hospital like six months. Wow. On, you know, just dysentery. And I survived that. So, you know, I, I, that and then while I was growing up in Hawaii, you know, in Hawaii, all you can do is uh, go out and either surf or fish. Yeah. So usually we go out uh, spear fishing. you know, you, you, you skin dive and you know you go down and, and try and get uh, spear fish. Uh, I almost drowned doing that. Uh, I got caught in an undertow. Hmm. Uh, usually those undertows take you out to sea. Yeah. I was lucky. Instead of taking me out to sea, he turned me around like this, you know, in circle, 
and he threw me against the uh, shore wall. Wow. All the rocks were on the shore. I got thrown over there, and, and, and oh, I was bleeding from, you know, all over my body. And, uh, you know, I just protected my head. And uh, my buddy uh, saw me in trouble, so he came running, you know, along that, that rocks and grabbed my hand and, and pulled me out. So, you know, I was, I was fortunate, you know. I could have drowned right then and there. So, so I, you came back from that plateau, and where did you go? Well, from the plateau, we, we were, um, uh, I think we were on the outskirts uh, uh, closer to uh, Taegu. Um, there was an orchard, uh, apple orchard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, we there are a lot of yeah, apple trees and we, there. Uh, we got all our you, you know uh, unit together there, um, and one of the uh, the top sergeants came running out and he said uh, he needs volunteers, and I said what for? He said maybe we can go and help some uh, you know uh, survivors. So I said, okay, I'm in. So I think there were maybe about 12, 12 of us. We got on a truck and we started going back, you know, in, uh, towards Taejong. Wow, that's a dangerous. Yeah, and, but well, when we were approaching the no man's land, uh, we started hearing uh, uh, burp guns going off. What? Burp guns. What is that? Uh, it's it's little machine gun that the, oh, the I see. Russian yeah. Yeah, Russians yeah. have. Yeah, they sound a little different from American, uh, you know, mm -hmm. guns. So you could tell. You could tell whether it's a burp gun or not. Right, right. So uh, you st started hearing those, and I, and and so uh, the top sergeant said, "Looks like it's too late for us, you know, to go in. Uh, they they're probably going around shooting all the survivors, you know." And, and if we go in there, we, we're in trouble, you know, we'll yeah. never get out. Right. So we decided, okay, fine, you know, turned around and, and we went back. So I never found out anything, uh, anybody, you know, coming out of there. Um, so I kind of said, well, I guess I'll never see a whole bunch of those guys anymore. And, but one of the guys, um, uh, one day, uh, I guess we were still in that apple orchard area. Uh, I saw something moving in the bush. And so I looked over and sure enough, that was uh, my assistant, used to be my assistant. You mean American soldier? Yeah, yeah, and I said, what are you doing over there, you know? So he smiled and he, he started running towards me and, and he said what happened to them was, was um, uh, in Taejeon, when they got overrun, everybody scattered. Right. You know, and uh, he was going up north yeah, and, and when he found out he was going the wrong direction. <laughs> so he, he said he turned around and started going south. And then he ended and up then in Tegu. And then he said uh, he had to um, drink uh, uh, rice paddy water. Right. And I said, boy, are you lucky? Because I said, you know, you drink that stuff and, uh, you know, you, you get dysentery. Right. But, you know, he didn't get that dysentery. And he said he just, you know, nim nimbled on things that he could just nimble on. So, yeah, when I saw him, he was like, he was. He looks like a you know a scarecrow, you know. He lost a lot of weight, and he was doing that just looking for where we were I see. for about ten days. Mm. So from Tegu, where did you go? So from there, um, uh, I guess we got pushed towards uh, Tegu and uh, into the uh, Pusan perimeter. Yeah. Yeah, in the Pusan perimeter, all all we did was just just try to defend that whole area. Uh, the general said, 
they, we're not going to move anymore. You know, that's it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, we're so, going to die. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I started going out to the the uh, river and started swimming. You know, condition myself to swim. <laughs> but I could during, swim. You know, during I, I the used, war. I, you know, I used to be able to swim quite quite a while. Uh, yeah, I could go out. Uh, spear fishing and stay out in the water for you know three four hours. Wow, you know so I, I was I wasn't in that kind of condition then, but so I decided well I better start, and I started going to the river and, and doing that you know every 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 day. Um, others saw me doing that, and they, they asked me what are you doing? I said what do you think? You know, I don't think we're going to be here very long. I said. We're either gonna get pushed in that in the water, or we're all gonna die here. So I said <laughs> I, I prefer to try and swim out, and there's uh, navy ships out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, at least I, I may have a chance, you know, to survive. You're very ambitious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, would you believe? All of those guys started doing the same thing I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way out, right? Yeah, uh, yeah I found out geez. every time I, I went to the uh, uh, river, all these guys were doing the same thing I'm doing, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, we stayed So there, there was no battle in Naktong area at the time. You're no, talking you about just, end of July? This, this was... Uh, in Early August? August? Yeah, it was in August. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was August. Yeah, and then I, I didn't think we were going to, you know, hold, hold there too long because um, everybody was getting tired and, you know. Anyway, uh, we were wondering how come, uh, you know, the, the uh, Korean, North Koreans aren't attacking uh, like, you know, they, uh, they used to attack all the way south, and I kind of figured maybe they, they also have problems like we're having that we're all fatigued, mm. you know, and their supply line is pretty long. So uh, our aircrafts are, you know, uh, damaging their, their supply line. So maybe they, that's slowing them down. And uh, then I, I started hearing a lot of noise uh, and uh, I, I looked around and I saw a whole bunch of tanks. You know, we never had tanks there mm -hmm. during that period. Uh, when, but when I saw all those tanks, I said, where in the heck did they come from? They, they said, well, they, they just brought it over from, uh, you know, Japan or whatever. Uh, there were those World War II uh, Sherman tanks. Uh, and so they were, the engines were revving up, and that's what made all that noise. And, and so maybe that also kind of held probably back the, the you know North Koreans mm. from attacking. Uh, and that was uh, yeah a lot of part of around August uh, because the the Incheon landing I think took place around September. September fifteenth. Yeah. So. Did you participate there? No, 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 no. That, 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 you know, further on north. Uh, right. Uh, so after Incheon landing, what did you, what did your unit do? Where, where did your unit go? Uh, we were really surprised. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, one day, see, we didn't know there would be a Incheon, Incheon landing. landing, right? And uh, so all of a sudden, there's nobody out there. Hmm. And so. We were wondering what happened, and uh, then they started revving up all the tanks, you know, and said, we're going to go forward now. Did you have actually battled in the uh, Busan perimeter? No? No, no. Not at all? No, I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't even fire my weapons uh, all that time, you know. You just swim. Yeah, we were just <laughs> going backwards, you know, and never fired anything. Uh, all, all I see around us is... Uh, uh, Battle Reavy re people, uh, there was a, 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 an artillery unit. There were five guys in that artillery unit out of that whole battalion. There was only about five guys that were there remaining. 
And I asked them, uh, what happened to uh, all your guns, the 105s? They all lost, lost them. It's, it's out there somewhere. And so, you know, most of the guys were just, just, just sitting there doing, doing nothing, really. Uh, because all the infantry and, uh, was on the line out there. And, and some of the, the uh, units in our unit uh, uh, was also on the line. But us being the h &S company, we just stayed there to back them up. I see. Yeah, uh, you know, so, uh, like I You're said, lucky I, I, again. I, need, I never have to fire, a, you know, a rifle. Um, so, where yeah. did you go so, from there? Well, so I decided uh, uh, it, when we started going on offensive, I'm going to get something more powerful than, you know, M1. Yeah. So I went to the ordinance, and I said, I want to... Browning automatic. Uh -huh. I don't know if you know what Browning yeah, yeah, automatic. Yeah. Is. I said I want a Browning automatic, and then a thousand rounds. Yeah. And I was to be surprised, you know. The guy said, "Oh, all you want is one." I said, "What do you mean?" I said, "I only have you know two hands to hold that thing." He said, "Well," he said, "A lot of people want that too, you know." And so it's kind of like a bestseller. So anyway, no problem. He gave me uh, what I asked for, and I put that on the truck. And as soon as we, we started moving forward, uh, we saw no, nothing out there. We were, we were traveling like 30 miles a day, hmm. saw nothing. Hmm. All we did, were doing was, we, uh, in our uh, battalion, we had five tanks. Uh, you know, with dozer blades, uh, those four or uh, five tanks, uh, I guess they, they use uh, quite a bit of uh, gasoline. So yep. uh, every 30 miles or so, we have to stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you have to fill, it, fill up the, the tanks. And I th if I remember, I think they had two tanks. Uh, if one tank goes empty, they have to stop because they need the other tank in case yeah. they have to fight. Yeah. So I think there was 180 getting tanks on each. Yeah, it took a while for us to feel it because, you know, it's hand crank. And then after that, you know, we just keep moving, uh, you know, going about 30 miles a day and saw nothing. And when we got up to uh, Taejeon again, yeah. uh, we rushed over uh, to, to uh, where they used to have uh, a prison camp. Yep. And about, I guess there were about half a dozen of us. Uh, we went looking to see what happened to uh, the prisoners. And, uh, you know, the, the, the gate on the prison camp was open completely and looks really empty. So we decided, well, it looks like uh, they, they, you know, they, they took all the prisoners away until one guy called me and said, look over here. So we went up kind of slightly on a hillside and uh, we looked down and, and this, uh, this is a ditch, you know, uh, uh, a trench, uh, quite a long trench. And the, all we saw was uh, dead bodies. Uh, they were, their hands were tied behind their back. And they were all Americans. Oh. So they didn't take any prisoners back with them. And they didn't even have probably time to, to even bury them, you know. So it, it was just an open trench with all the bodies just laying there. Yeah, that was a pretty bad sight. Yeah. I think I had some nightmares, you know, thinking about that. And then you go to Seoul? Yeah, yeah and then we went through Seoul. Um, like I said, very little opposition. Uh, so you were just, just going 
battle of hell just going up north, uh, going through uh, Poinyang, and all the way out, I think pretty close to the border, uh, Yellow River border. I think we were about 20 miles away. Mm -hmm. The 21st Infantry was even closer. They mm -hmm. were about like maybe 12 miles away, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were on the west side of uh, Korea. Mm. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, we were having a Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, and uh, uh, we heard that uh, you know we'd be leaving uh, uh, Korea before uh, Christmas. So we were all happy and uh, have, had had a great Thanksgiving dinner. Well. We guessed wrong. Yeah, all of a sudden, uh, late, at, late, late at night. What day was yeah, it? They said, when was it? We got, we're going to move out of here. Real yeah, quick. When, what day? I'm not sure what day November. it was. I'm not sure. November, uh, right? Yeah, it, it was a lot of part of November. Right. Yeah. And uh, we packed really quick. And uh, what we can pack, we, we uh, destroyed. And we started moving out. And when we moved out, uh, uh, we didn't have any opposition either, you know, going, getting out, out of there. And we were on the road for like 24 hours, driving all the way out. Um, what I heard later was that uh, the second division was on the west, uh, east side of us. Uh, they had a hard time getting out mm -hmm. because they had to go west and south, mm -hmm. whereas we, we just have to go south. So they, they had real problem, you know, going west, uh, west and then coming down. So I don't know. There, there were quite a few, uh, I guess, casualties uh, in the second division. Yeah. So you all the way down to Yeah, we Suwon? went all the way to Seoul and... Uh, uh, we got, in fact, I think we got pushed all the way below Seoul. Uh, yeah, Suwon. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I remember um, uh, we went back into uh, Seoul uh, the second time, you know, before I left. Yeah. Uh, so during that period when we were going back and forth in Seoul, you know, the buildings that were there were no longer there. Oh. Um, all we saw was uh, these smokestacks. I guess they're pretty hard to uh, blow up. So mm -hmm. all we saw was smokestacks and uh, all the buildings were destroyed. Uh, when you look, look at Seoul today, uh, you, you'll never believe that it used to be nothing there. Yeah, yeah it, it was uh, leveled. When did you leave Korea? I left... Uh, uh, around May of 1951. So I spent about 11 months there. So you were in the, the offensive, spring offensive, uh, against the North Korea and Chinese, right? Oh yeah, the, 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 the first time we went over, yeah. uh, when the Chinese came in, we went down, and then we went up north again uh, and I guess got pushed back again. So I, I guess I went to Seoul twice. Twice. Yeah. And then by then uh, uh, we had change of command. You know, MacArthur got fired. Uh, some other general took over. And Ridgeway. Yeah. And by that time uh, I was about ready to uh, get out of there. Yeah. So. So. Did you, you didn't know anything about Korea before you left for Korea, right? Uh, what was that again? Did, did you know anything about Korea before you left for Korea? No, I, I, all, all I know was that, uh, uh, you know, during uh, the uh, feudal days, Jap mm -hmm. uh, the ja Jap Japan had invaded Korea. Right. Yeah. And not only once, but maybe twice or yeah, so. Yeah. And, uh, uh, the history tells me that, uh, you know, uh, they finally gave up because mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they lost so many men. And, uh, uh, but their, their story was, was that they were trying to get to China. Yep. 
through Korea. And uh, they, they gave the whole thing up. Uh, when, when that uh, uh, Lord died, uh, and they decided, no, they, they don't want any more wars out that way. And they wanted to keep Japan, uh, you know, all, get rid of all the civil wars. Right. No, they had so many civil wars, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And so I started looking into, you know, uh, those things. And uh, I started uh, uh, watching uh, Japanese uh, 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 films on, on television. And I saw, you know, how, how the, the feudal system uh, operated, you know, yeah. just kept fighting each other. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I decided maybe I ought to find out where my, my family, uh, you know, uh, sided. Yep. And it uh, looks like uh, my family sided with the Tokugawas. Tokugawa yes. Yeah, Ieyasu. And maybe that's why my family survived right. for 700 years, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, uh, you have these uh, family crest. Uh, when they show these films, uh, you know, all these... Samurais would, would be use their, their family crest when they, they're fighting. You know, they have a flag that, that yes. shows the crest. And I noticed, yeah, that, that's the family crest that I have, you mm. know. <laughs> so I said, well, it looks like uh, we were fighting on the right, right side. So that's why you, our family's here. You got to go back to Japan and find the place and all this lineage together. And, you know. Well, I know, you know, all the... My, my ancestors are buried. Uh, yeah. uh, I saw that, uh, you know. But, uh, you know, I, I thought maybe one day uh, I would like to go back again. Uh, but my wife wasn't interested, okay. you know. So Let me ask this question. Uh, what was the most difficult thing during your 11 months in Korea? Uh, the, the weather. The winter. Winter was the worst thing I ever experienced. How was yeah, it? I, I almost lost my toes. Um, uh, I think the way I saved it was um, I built a fire and uh, I put my two feet right on the fire. You know, I couldn't even feel the fire. Oh my goodness. That's how frozen it was. And, uh, and I kept it there until I started feeling the heat. And then I, I took it out, and, and that's why I still have my toes. And, uh, some of the guys, uh, they lost their ear and, and you know, the nose and, and also toes. When you left in May of 1951, what was your feeling? Do you th did you have any uh, expectation that the Korea would be different, or what? What were you? What was thinking? Well, do you think that the Korea would develop like this, or what do you? Th uh, no, that that that's a complete surprise. You know how how Korea became such such an economic uh, you know power. Um, uh, I know. I'm an Oriental, and I know how Orientals operate, and they're very good, you know, uh, at doing things. And so, uh, I, it's not a surprise to me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how Korea uh, became so so economically uh, stable. Um, but one thing I need to tell you about uh, was uh, when we were uh, when I was in Korea, we were assigned. Uh, uh, some South Korean uh, army uh, yeah. recruits. Yep. Uh, they, sent, uh, they, they, they had two of those guys assigned to me. And uh, so it wasn't any problem, you know. I, uh, I can speak Japanese, they can understand Japanese. So um, I, one day I, I, I wanted uh, one of the trucks to be uh, uh, to have gasoline uh, put in, into the tanks. So I said, uh, uh, you know, I forgot his name now. I said, go ahead and, and you know, uh, get the gasoline, uh, you know, 
uh, five gallon cans. He had something, you know, he was carrying. He dropped the whole thing and he went to get the gasoline tank and did what I told him to do. And I, I didn't think much of it then. The following time, uh, I guess he was doing something else. Uh, mm. And uh, I said, uh, after you're done, I said, I want you to do this. Mm -hmm. He dropped what he was doing and he went and did what I, I wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, come here, come here. And I, I sat him down I said, I said, don't do that. I said, you know, what you were doing, you know, somebody told you to do that. I said, finish that. And then when I tell you to do something, I said, then you, you do what I tell you. I said, you know, don't, don't just drop everything and, and, and do what I tell you. He kept looking at me, you know, and uh, finally he said, he said, you're not Japanese soldier? And I said, hell no. <laughs> he said, boy, he says, you know, it's like his whole face, uh, you know, just, just dropped, you know, he said, boy, he said, I thought you were a Japanese soldier. And he said, uh, uh, he was afraid that if I didn't tell him to do something and he didn't do it right away, his head comes off. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, that's what they used to do, you know, way back when uh, Japan occupied Korea. I said, you mean they, they did that kind of stuff? You know, he said, yeah. He said, if you don't do what they tell you uh, uh, right away, you know, they chop their head off. You know, I said, boy, that, 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 that's terrible. That doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, but there are many things that they did brutally, but I don't think so. I mean, mm -hmm. but anyway, yeah. they are afraid of Japanese soldier. Yeah. 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 So anyway, um, uh, that's the experience I had, you know, with oh. uh, the Koreans. That, and from that on, uh, yeah, we got along fine. Um, I don't know what happened to those guys, though, right, uh, yeah. uh, because uh, after a while, I guess the, the, the Korean uh, army uh, called those guys out from, you know, all our units, and uh, I don't know what happened to that, yeah. those guys. Uh, so, uh, you were not surprised to see that you know, how Korea has developed because you understand the Asian sort of uh, culture and Asian people, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And right. Japan did it do the same thing before Korea did, you know. Yeah. So what do you think? I mean, what is, what is Korea to you to now me? after all those years? Uh, you know, like... like I had some Korean friends, uh, you know, in Hawaii. Uh, um, in Hawaii, we, you know, we, you have the Filipinos, the uh, Korean, Japanese, Chinese, Korean, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese yeah. you know, Portuguese, and I have friends all all around Hawaiians. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I have uh, Hawaiian relatives now, uh, but. You know, that's that's what Hawaii is. You know, it, it's it's a mixture of people, and so uh, the only way to communicate with a lot of the, the uh, uh, people were uh, by using pidgin English. So we grew up kind of using pidgin English. Uh, so we, we know some words in Korean, uh, some words in, in Filipino. You know, uh, I know, like if you want. The guy, you say, Manong, you know, and uh, so it's, it's like that. And, and so I, I don't feel any different from, you know, I have, like I said, friends. Uh, and I'm not surprised uh, Korea is uh, what it is today. Yeah. Yeah. That's one radical difference between majority of the Korean War veterans, which are Americans, and you are Japanese and American, Japanese-American, mm -hmm. but you understand the Asian, so 
you know that we have such sort of potential and and sort of power and diligence to to make things happening. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is the legacy of the Korean War and Korean War veterans? I don't know. Um, I guess I, I guess we we need to we need to get into it. You know. Uh, See, I was uh, uh, working in the uh, missile industry for over 30 years. Oh, by the way, uh, I think the war, uh, for me anyway, was a, was, was, uh, a good thing for me. Uh -huh. Why? Know, not for everybody else, but for me it was a good thing. Uh, because the only reason why I, I could uh, live here and, and uh, uh, be comfortable uh, I had a you know comfortable family and uh, uh, I'm fairly uh, well off mm -hmm. you know uh, because the Korean War made me uh, able to go to um, the universities. What university? Yeah, uh, uh, Denver University. Ah. Um, university of to Denver. To study engineering. Uh -huh. Uh, and and the reason I could do that was because of the GI Bill of Rights. Yep. And they, so I I can use the money to go to school. Otherwise, I never would have gone. You yep. know. And so it, to me, it was a, a, a good, good thing. thing for for the war, to for me anyway. For for the people who didn't survive, right. it's not a not a good thing at all. Uh, because I lost a lot of friends. Uh, but. Like I said, you know, uh, I'm 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 fortunate that I, you know, I was in the right place at the right time throughout the war, and took advantage of, you know, the GI Bill, uh, and raised the family. Unfortunately, you know, my my wife passed away uh, uh, July in July last year. So oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, you know, I'm really kind of, you know, hurt by that, but I don't know. Mm. So you were in working in the missile industry? Yeah. What company? Uh, I worked several companies. Uh, went from uh, Convair to uh, North American Aviation to uh, Notronics and finally to Rockwell ah. International. Uh, so all during that period, I went from uh, surface to air missiles from the Navy. Uh, I worked on those and, and then uh, for the Air Force, I worked on uh, uh, these, uh, uh, like the v V1 uh, type uh, right. uh, missile that uses, you know, uh, ramjet engines. Mm -hmm. uh, air to there, air. Yeah, from there. Uh, uh, they attached those to the B 52. Right. And uh, from there, I went to um, uh, ballistic missiles. Hmm. You know, the Minuteman missiles. What was your specialty? Uh, what's that? What was your specialty in that oh, missile industry? I, missile technology. I, I was um, uh, specializing in uh, making sure that uh, the electronics that operates the missile mm -hmm. uh, control systems is operating correctly. Okay. So uh, throughout my whole career, you know, I was always making sure that those things work. And uh, uh, when uh, uh, when we started building a, a newer missile, like the uh, Amex missile. Uh, I went to uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, what they call uh, uh, flight, uh, flight readiness test. That you, you test the missile so that while it's sitting on the ground, that if you ever launch that missile, it will fly right. Mm. And all the electronics will be working. So uh, I, I used to go out to Vandenberg uh, Air Force uh, quite a few times. Um, uh, 
before launch. And uh, so one of those, uh, uh, the first one that we launched, uh, I was hoping that it would be a success. And what do you know? It really went, uh, went fine, you know, and uh, everybody was real happy. Everything went, went so well. But they used to fly those all the way up to Kwajalein from Vandenberg. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, it's a very fortunate story, right? Fortunate that you had all this uh, yeah. career based on your military and based on your education through the GI Bill, so on. So they turn out to be very fortunate to you. Is it, like I said, this is the first time I made any interviews mm -hmm. outside of job interviews. Uh, <laughs> Usually, job interviews, uh, you know, I didn't mind. Uh, uh, oh, I, I have a, uh, I think, uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, when I was in, uh, finally, uh, in January uh, of uh, 1949, when I landed in Yokosuka, all the uh, uh, Japanese Americans who were ordered to uh, report to JHQ, mm -hmm. uh, and we were wondering what for. So anyway, we went there, and uh, we were being interviewed for linguists. Uh, when I came town to m came my time, uh, uh, this uh, uh, white guy, you know, he he spoke. Uh, Japanese with a with an English accent, mm -hmm. you know, pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> you know, if he's going to be the interviewer, you know, for everybody else, I thought I I should correct him, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so I said, uh, sir, I said, uh, uh, I think uh, you have a pretty bad accent. <laughs> <laughs> He just said, thank you. He says, that'll be all. <laughs> that, that, uh, that was the shortest <laughs> interview I ever had in my life. <laughs> and very successful, right? <laughs> yeah. He didn't like that one bit, I guess. So. Uh, thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Nice meeting you, You're and welcome. thank you for your story.